Hi, welcome to the Bridge Connection. I'm excited to get into today's teaching. We're in the book of Psalms, going going through Psalms. Uh, sometimes we go through an entire Psalm in a day. Sometimes it's going to take us several days or a couple days or a long time, whatever. Uh, but we're, my whole goal in doing the Psalms is to get a fresh view of the glory and the majesty and the greatness of God because that's what, that's what mainly comes out of these Psalms. You know, regardless of man's inflated, you know, view of himself, God is the only one that's great. And not only is he the creator of everything, the Lord is the sustainer of everything. And, and he is, because of that, he's sovereign over everything. God, not man, is great. So he alone is to be praised. Now, as we start this psalm in just a moment, I, I want you just to open your hearts and your minds. Um, I just hope these psalms are, are changing your, your view of God, even though we've only done seven of them. Uh, they've changed my yesterday's Psalm 7. God just did such a number in my life as I was preparing to teach it, as I was sharing it yesterday. God was just doing some stuff in my heart as I was sharing, you know, for, with you guys. I was being changed. He was showing me stuff, and I'm sharing it as I'm seeing it. And after I studied the psalm again afterwards, and right now Psalm 7 has become my favorite psalm and because it, it's, it's mine. It's set me free. The enemy was doing work in my life, just trying to convince me of things I've done in the past years ago. You know, a long time ago there, you know, it brings them up and all of a sudden you start thinking and dwelling and, and you, you get beat up and say, how oh, I'm sorry, God, and how could you forgive me? And I'm such an evil, you know, and I'm blah, blah, blah. And in that Psalm, God told me, he reminded me, and it became a confident thing for me. Your enemy has been defeated. I defeated him on the cross, son, and he's done. He's over. One day, ultimately defeat, you're going to see. But right now, he is can't do anything in your life you don't allow him to do. You are forgiven for everything. You know that. And all of a sudden, there was just a refreshing. I know that. Of course I know that. That's why I love him so much. He has been forgiven much, loves much. And, and of course, but then the enemy starts chipping away. He knows exactly where we're weak. And through that psalm yesterday, my life changed again with a confidence that Everything is dead and buried and washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And it because of the greatness of God. Psalm 8 is a magnificent psalm written by David, of course, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that testifies to the majesty of God's name. And if you don't hear anything this day and you walk away saying, God is majestic, God is great, I've accomplished what he wants me to do today, man. Throughout all creation, God's unsurpassed greatness and glory is clearly seen in this psalm. From the vastness of the universe to the weakness of man who is, who is enabled to overcome his enemies by God's strength in that person. Because of that, all creation cries out, only God is great. This is a psalm of David written by Israel's king, the sweet psalmist of Israel. Its exact historical background is, is not known, a lot of speculation, we really don't know. It arose, we do know this, it arose from David's heart, and it had to be in a contemplative moment when perhaps he, he stared up into the vast skies and looked at the universe, what he could see, and he just thought about and thought about and pondered the greatness of God. And compared to this awesome God, David thinks, what is man? May this psalm cause hearts to look upward and consider the glory of God. The greatness of God is, is seen in the, in the vastness of his creation, both in his power to use the weakness of man to overthrow the mighty and in his ability to manage his creation. Pick it up at verse one. Prepare your heart for what God wants to teach us. Oh Lord, our Lord, 
How excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. Now the greatness of God, know this going in, far exceeds that which creation can reveal. This psalm begins with a declaration of God's greatness. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. <laughs> He's radiant. There's a revealed splendor in, the, in his creation of, of who God is and, and what he says and what he does. God's perfect character is seen in the beauty of his created world. Think about it. By the works of his hands, David declared, you have set your glory above the heavens. God's glory, the, the shining of the of the greatness of his character cannot be contained by creation. His glory exceeds the heights of creation. No matter what we can see, we can look at that. God's greatness exceeds everything he's created. The heavens and earth can only partially express his excellence because the creator remains far greater than what he's created. In verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because you're your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. David continued, pointing to God's choice to use the weakness of men to defeat his enemies. From the lips of children and, and infants, David says, you, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe. This means that, that God uses the weak to defeat the mighty. In this, God's greatness is much further revealed. His strength is more than sufficient to empower the weakest of men, the weakest of humanity to overturn the mightiest of foes. Grab that. Live that the rest of your life. Verses three and four. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? So David is reasoning here, and he's 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 thinking, you know, that that man's position really seems not all that big. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal when it's compared to the majestic being of God's creation. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, David said, for God to create the universe, grab this, David understood was just the work of God's fingers. Creating the universe was such an easy project, it was just his fingers. In light of this, David says, what is man that you are even mindful of him? Compared to God, man is a minute creature, so insignificant in the universe small, weak. We think we are so robust and can handle things, but God is mindful of man and he exercises care toward him. This creating God, hear me, is not just a creating God, he's a caring God. The greatness of God is seen as his loving attention toward people who are so small, so minuscule when compared to him. Finite man, David said, is nothing compared to the limitless God. Verse five, for you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So David, reflecting upon the, the, the high dignity God has a, a sign to 
lowly man. David marveled. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and you crowned him with glory and honor. This declaration is a testimony not to the greatness of man, but to the glory of God. The psalmist was uh, astonished that the sovereign creator of the galaxies would, would, would bestow such rel relative significance on those as significant as his creation. Man, when I say man, I'm talking about created being. There is man and woman. I don't care what anybody else says. God created them man and woman. Verse six, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. His people were given dominion of creation. David continued, you, you, you made man ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. The greatness of God is seen in the fact that he has entrusted so much to his creation, the human being. Only the supreme God could elevate those so low to a position so high, dominion over what he created. Describe, describing the nature of man's delegated rule, David talks about some of the borders of his rule as being over the, over the flocks, over the herds, over the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, the fish in the water, all that swim paths of the seas, from the grass grazing cattle to flesh eating beasts to fish, all living creatures are under man's dominion. God's great. Verse nine, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Verse one, begin with the same way it ends, with an affirmation of the majesty of the Lord. God, hear me, God, not man, is to be praised. God alone is majestic, full of glory, and he alone deserves our worship. The greatness of God is seen in the vastness of his creation, both in his power to use the weakness of man to overthrow the mighty and in his ability to manage his creation. Glory and honor to God. Psalm 8 is a compelling call to worship. Every believer's priority is this, the giving of glory to God as this psalm begins and ends with praise to God, so every one of us, our thoughts, our words, even our entire lives must be filled with praise for God because God is Lord over everything. His preeminence must be declared with an adoration that is personal, passionate, public, private, Wholehearted worship will surely flood our hearts when we, when we realize God's unsurpassed greatness. God's supremacy, rightly understood, should affect how we conduct ourselves in every facet of life. Contrary to popular thinking, people are not the center of the universe, God is. So we as believers are to live every moment of every day under the shadow of God's greatness, seeking to bring glory and honor to God. God is honored. God is glorified when his power fills out weakness 
and enables us to rule over the works of his hand. In all that God has called his people to do, we are nothing but children and infants who need divine strength to propel us forward in his will. Apart from the Lord, <laughs> we have no ability to do anything eternal and lasting. There's a God assigned reason for every life. The glory of God compels believers to carry out this high calling in God's surpassing power. Do you understand what's being said here? When we aren't glorifying God, we aren't praising God as our nation has turned a corner and, and now we praise the creature rather than the creator and we begin to make our own decisions on what that create that creature is, that created being is. We can make it into what we ever want it to be, we say. And it's foolishness. When we take God out of the mix, God created everything. Who does man think that he is? We were created lower than God. How can man look at the universe and the vastness of the universe and the skies and the creation, the stars, everything, and say, well, God didn't do it right. We're gonna recreate some things, redo some things. Sad. All I can say to us as believers, my friends, is we must, we must worship and praise the almighty God because he is the answer. I love church. The church isn't the answer. It's not a matter that we're supposed to, I don't think we're supposed to sue to try to get the church back in and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> church isn't the answer. Ch I love church, somebody loves church more than I do. I love the, the concept of church, the being of church, what church really means. I, I, I love being around the, the, the body of Christ, but as much as I love it, that's not what I worship, but that's not the answer. His name is Jesus. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship the Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil what? where yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Worship him. Praise him. I'll see you tomorrow.